Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. In today's video, we are talking about medical coding of neoplasms part three. All right guys, let's continue this discussion. Coding of malignancies of hematopoietic and lymphatic systems. Okay, understand what a, a, a hematopoietic and lymphatic system is. It's just blood and lymph nodes. Okay, so unlike solid tumors, neoplasms that arise in your lymphatic and your hematopoietic tissues do not spread to secondary sites. Because think about it, where are lymph nodes and where is blood in the body? It's all over. So instead of malignant cells, circu um, instead these type of malignant cells circulate and they may occur in other sites within the tissues. And these sites are considered still to be primary sites rather than secondary. Because remember, with the solid, solid tumors of the breast, of the pancreas, of the liver, whenever you have malignant neoplasms of those sites, and when they spread, it spread to a secondary site. But because blood and lymph nodes are all over the body, when it spreads from one lymph node to another lymph node, it's still primary cancer. Or from the blood in your... Um, armpits to the blood in your liver it's still blood so it's still primary okay all right so let's talk about these neoplasms of the lymph nodes or glands primary malignant neoplasms of the lymph nodes or glands are classified to category C81 through C88 so when you get a chance pull your code books out and look at codes category C81 through C88 and look at your fourth character. It provides more specificity about the particular type of neoplasm. And then the fifth character talks about the nodes that are involved, which lymph nodes. Now, if the neoplasm involves lymph nodes of glands of additional sites, then the fifth character, eight, is a sign that indicates that the malignancy now involves multiple sites, not just one. And when a solid tumor is spread to lymph nodes, a code from category C77 is assigned and no code from category C81 through C88 because remember C81 through C88 are the malignant um, nodes cancer but when it's a secondary when it's spread from a solid tumor to the lymph nodes it becomes a secondary neoplasm. Lymphomas can be malignant or benign and benign lymphomas are classified to code D36.0, benign neoplasm of lymph nodes. Malignant lymphomas are located by referencing the subterm for the site under the main term lymphoma. Look up lymphoma. All right, let's look at Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is category C81 in your code book, is a type of cancer that originates from lymphocytes. Hodgkin's lymphoma is characterized by the orderly spread of disease from one lymph node group to another by the development of some symptomatic symptoms with advanced disease. Hodgkin's lymphoma may be treated with radiation, chemotherapy, or hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. The choice of treatment depends on the age and the sex of the patient and the stage bulk and histological subtype of the disease. Category C81 provides a fourth character subclassification to identify the pathologic subtype of Hodgkin's lymphoma and a fifth character to identify the lymph nodes that are affected. Non-Hodgkin's non lymphoma consists of category C82 follicular lymphoma, C83 non-follicular lymphoma, category C84, mature T NK cell lymphomas, category C85, other and unspecified types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, category C86, other specified types of T NK cell lymphomas, and category C88, malignant immunoproliferative diseases and certain B cell lymphomas. So when you get a chance, Pull out your code books and look at category codes C82, 83, 84, 85, 86, and 88. Similar to category C81, 
Hodgkin's lymphoma. Category, categories C82 through C85 provide a fifth character to identify the lymph nodes that are involved. Now, how do we sequence codes for neoplastic disease? The basic rule for designating principal diagnoses is the same for neoplasms as for any other condition. That is, the principal diagnoses is the condition found after study to have occasioned the patient in the hospital. What brought your patient in? Whatever the reason, whatever the condition, that's your principal diagnoses. All right. When treatment, now the treatment of this disease process or these cancers, when treatment is directed toward the primary site, the malignancy of that site is designated as your principal diagnoses, followed by any metastatic sites. The only exception to this guideline is if a patient's admission or encounter is so solely for administration of chemotherapy, immunotherapy, or radiation therapy. And in that case, the appropriate Z51 code is assigned as the first listed or principal diagnoses. And then the diagnosis or problem for which the service, radiation, chemotherapy, or whatever is being performed for, is assigned as your secondary diagnoses. So again, when a patient with this neoplasm, this type of neoplasm comes in for radiation, chemotherapy, or immunotherapy, then that code for the radiation therapy, immunos immunotherapy, or um, chemotherapy, and it's a Z51, becomes your principal diagnosis, and then you use an additional code to identify the cancer or whatever condition that therapy is treating. Sometimes two primary sites are present, and in that case, each is coded as a primary neoplasm because that's what it is. Sometimes when you go to a doctor, your physician will find two sites and they can both be primary diagnoses. So when treatment is di directed primarily toward one of those two sites, then the neoplasm of that site is designated as your principal diagnoses because that's primarily where your services, your resources were, were rendered toward, so that becomes your principal diagnoses. But when treatment is directed equally toward both primary neoplasms, then either one may be sequenced as your principal diagnoses. And when a patient is admitted because of a primary neoplasm with metastasis and treatment is directed solely toward that secondary site, then that secondary site is designated as your principal diagnoses, even though your primary malignancy is still present. And additional code for that primary malignancy is assigned as an additional code. So understand here, even though you have a primary and a secondary neoplasm, and I know the rule of thumb is always put your primary first, but if your sole treatment is toward the secondary cancer and not the primary, then your secondary cancer becomes your principal diagnosis because that's where all of your services are, are generated toward. So then your secondary cancer or neoplasm becomes your principal diagnosis, but also assign a code for your principal, I mean your primary site. Okay, hope I didn't confuse you there. Now when a patient is admitted because of a primary neoplasm with metastasis and treatment is directed equally toward the primary and the secondary sites, then your primary malignancy should be designated as your principal diagnosis with an additional code assigned for the secondary neoplasm. And patients with malignant neoplasms often develop complications due to either the malignancy itself or the therapy that the patient receives. So when admission is primarily for treatment of the complication, then your complication is coded first, followed by the appropriate code for the neoplasm. Okay guys, I hope I clearly explained how to appropriately sequence neoplasm codes go back and as I say apply yourselves to better understanding again what I mean by apply yourselves is look up Hodgkin's lymphoma non-Hodgkin's disease or lymphoma um, what a solid tumor is what a hematopoietic and a lymphatic tumor is because again 
it will help you better code these conditions if you know exactly what's going on. And if you haven't had a chance yet, guys, go to my second channel, Medical Coder Life. I did a video there yesterday where I explained how I almost lost my certification. Y'all, it's December, end of year. End of year, you're supposed to report your continuing education units. And I just realized the first of this month, I did a lot of preparation for workshops, but I didn't attend. I did a lot of presenting at workshops, but I didn't attend workshops myself. And in order to maintain my certifications, and I don't have one, I have three, I'm supposed to have continuing education units to maintain it. Oh my gosh, I was in a bind last week. So be sure and go and watch that video. And don't forget I'm doing a series on, on that channel as well on physician documentation. Okay guys, see you in the next one. Thanks.